Well, I thought this trans was going to be awesome. I mean, the bike looks great and everything, and it was rebuilt. So if you look at the gears, just, you know, wow, everything looks great. Output shaft threads look great. And then you notice, oh, wow, doesn't look so great right there on the, uh, on the main shaft needle bearing surface, right? So this is one of two parts that hold the... Um, the needle bearings in place, right? This is one of the thrust faces. There's one here and there's one there. So we're going to hold on to that. There's nothing wrong with that. This is a selective shim. They make these in a bunch of sizes to set up the gear and play from here to there. So we're going to hold on to that one. There's a bunch of different sizes. And since we're going to be replacing the main shaft and probably quite a few gears, um, we're going to be replacing this too. So this is your low gear which they're almost always in good shape. You're not really going to find too many problems with them. You can see it's had a little bit of metal go through it at one time, but, but it's clean. It's reusable. I don't know if we're just going to switch the whole gear set out to Andrew's shafts and everything, which is most likely what's going to happen. But I pulled a snap ring off under here, so this would come apart a little quicker. So there's normally a snap ring right there in that groove, right? So now we can look at this gear and you can see right in there, well, all, on all the side, the drive sides, right? They're kind of hammered. Let me see if I can get that to, there we go. You can see they're just kind of hammered, right? So the gear itself isn't bad, but it's a little bit hammered. Like I said, the shaft, so you get some water in it. We've got some some corrosion here we got some bad rust pitting here you can feel it with your finger it's nasty there's no way a needle bearing would have survived on this it would have just eventually started chipping the metal or the chrome plating or the hard plating i'm sorry and then would have come apart so we'd expect this side to also be kind of burred up which they are um you can see that slight taper on them is what kind of holds them in gear that's kind of undercutting right Again, hammered right here. This is the main shaft gear. Hammered, right? Look at that. It's horrible. Really wound, rounded and beat. So, shift forks, lots of pushing on them. You know, they're pushing. Oops, they sit inside this groove right here. And they're pushing real hard. And that's what wears them like this. Now, this could be um because the lash is wrong between the two but we'll talk about that when we set it up later and there's tons of other guys that have videos of setting this kind of stuff up so you can look at their videos too i'm just giving you an overview of things to look for so if this bushing's good like i said the rest of the gears are good this has a pair of selective shims that oops that doesn't go there this has some selective shims right here for setting up the lash between right there how where it sits down see what i mean which that actually looks too far if you look at this one see how much closer that one is that one's pretty far so that's enough on that part it's going to need to be completely be gone through we'll probably change out the main shaft that's about 300 bucks for an andrews you can get a used one though um counter is counter's a lot cheaper counter's about 100 bucks and about a hundred dollars a year, so you end up about a thousand bucks to do Andrews in there, and then you're gonna need uh, you're gonna need some gaskets and all that stuff. So this is the other side, and you can see that pitting in there, right? That pitting goes along with those needles, and you can see all those needles are pitted, right? So one other thing I noticed when I mic the original bearing, it's one inch uh, five sixty nine, right? And the replacement is one inch 566. So that is not so good because this came out of here. Now this doesn't go in this way. I'm just showing you. It comes in from the inside of the case, whoops, and goes in that way, right? And then this is the outside. But just for, just so you can kind of get an idea, see how it just dropped in? Now, it's not real loose. It's three thousandths, so it'll be a thou and a half on each side, right? But I don't think it's supposed to fit like that, right? So we're going to check into that and see. Um, this needle bearing is going to get replaced. One other funny thing about this bike, 
this is the one that had the oil leak down here, remember? And then uh, I had to mill that and then drill and tap it and then weld this piece on here and weld that in because they had filled these holes. What I think happened was it was actually missing this seal, which is a shift shaft seal. And I think gear lube was coming down and running like this and onto the gear case. And I think they thought that it was either leaking out of here or here. And they eliminated both those holes because of that, which hopefully that's not the case. Anyways, um, we're going to replace, you know, all the locking tabs. Like I said, a few different adjustable shims. Um, the retainer was bad for the gear, for the grease seal. So, you know, V-twin, but I got it through Sporties. So same thing with the, with the bearing, the needle bearing that's captured. This one goes right there. So that's it. Just a couple tips. Um, we'll get back on it and I'll figure it out. So stay tuned, subscribe, check out other people's videos about uh, rebuilds if you need more info and let me know what you think. Post a comment. Bye.